Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Universal Alien Villain Arena, featuring Thanos and Loki to see who reigns supreme as the better male villain. We're starting off on stage 84 of World Boss Legend Ultron to showcase both of these characters on the stage where basically only of the two of them can really go because it's Universal uh, Alien. Now, Loki does have a lot of tricks up his sleeve. It's a very cool uniform. It's better than ever, um, but it still has a lot of quirks. And one of those quirks uh, is that the fifth skill has more hits when there are more targets. Now, that means that he's sort of at his weakest versus bosses like Ultron, or basically any world boss for that matter, because there's only ever one enemy. We have yet to see that change for any world bosses, and until that does, um, it's basically, you know, a conversation that's going to be put on hold. But for the time being, this is sort of like his lowest damage. So he could actually be doing more damage, believe it or not, um, if he had uh, more enemies to hit. That's that's just kind of how it goes. But we're doing pretty well right now. One minute in and we've gone through 18 bars, so about a third of his life. So if he had no phases and no sort of interruptions, we could probably put him down in, you know, three minutes. And we actually get, we actually get very close to that despite all these interruptions here. We're going to open with a tier three and then do this. Thankfully, he doesn't dash away from us, so we get to soak up a lot of the damage. Generally, with the Tier 3, it lasts too long, so you actually don't want to um, let it linger. But the fourth skill has really good targeting, and his other skills have really good targeting, so that's okay. Uh, if anything, you'd want to do 3 into the Tier 3, and then into 5, and then into 4. 4 has really good targeting, 2 has really good targeting, so you don't lose a lot there. You do a slight delay on um, the third skill... So that it, um, we want to pop the tier three. We really don't want him. There we go. You really don't want him to go into iframe before we pop his shield. Um, but yeah, you want just a slight delay on three because that allows you to summon all the Loki clones that explode. If you instant cancel three, sometimes you don't, um, you don't get those exploding clones. So yeah, there you go. Two minutes in, and we're down to the last uh, eight bars. So I think this is really good. And as you'll see from the Thanos run, the builds are essentially identical. They're very, very close to being the same. The only thing I couldn't control for, of course, was um, the uh, <laughs> the artifact. I couldn't get a six-star artifact for Loki. I did my darndest. I did my best. We're going to pop the tier three here uh, just because it get, gives us a bunch of extra hits. Oh, he moves around. That's wonderful. Uh, but this allows us to, you know, play very safe, but also uh, get those. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to interrupt that clown there so we can start pumping out the last bit of damage. We do the two skill. We can do the one. We can splash in the one as well. Hopefully, we have enough time here. We're going to pop the, this and go, 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 go. Not quite as much damage as I would have hoped for. That's okay. We just need one more run here. Ooh, a little slow on the footwork. A little slow on the foot speed. Got me kind of scared. Wow, that was, that was scary. One, two, three... Four, five, six. We're gonna pop this and go, and this should be lights. Okay, this is very, this is basically identical to the run I did on my own. Thanos, the seasonal uniform farmer, has his work cut out for him to beat the 150 of Loki. On the other hand, we know that Thanos' uniform is seasonal, so uh, you can't get it all the time, right? That absolutely needs to be factored in to you know the conversation that we have. Thanos gets pushed around by Ultron sometimes, which is annoying. But yeah, at the end of the day, you do have to, when you talk about this uniform, remember that unlike Loki's that you can get any time, this one is only available during um, during April Fool's. It was kind of disappointing that they did that, but uh, yeah, it's something to, to keep in mind because if you don't have it, then Loki might actually be your only option. But he does, he is pumping out more damage right now. That's kind of hard to, uh, hard to deny here because we are now down to the 15th bar almost. So yeah, less than a minute in, and he crushes nearly half of Ultron's life. Uh, and that is, cons even considering the fact that Thanos doesn't have guaranteed crit rate, so some of my procs actually were late or early, meaning that uh, I could have actually done more damage. So it, it appears that raw damage, in, in terms of raw damage for World Boss Legend, it appears that Thanos is doing more than our, uh, you know, our favorite Asgardian trickster. Like, look at that, look at that crazy burst doing five, six bars of damage, just absolutely crushing, cruising through. Unfortunately, we get a bad teleport there where Ultron decides to just dip off the face of the planet. 
but we can still easily burst him down here also thanos has a damaging tier four skill so that is not to be undervalued it's super duper good for pve content where you have hp bars on enemies uh, tier four skills that deal damage very very underrated so that's definitely adding to his damage as you can see here we're not even two minutes in look at that burst a bar when you pop that tier four skill uh less than two minutes in and we're basically at the end of the fight Ooh, almost almost screwed that one up we're gonna let the uh, tier three ride out because it's a very very long iframe and this can actually just ko ultron right from the start so there you go we unfortunately triggered our rage so we have to just go from there but the damage is still pretty good you see the burst damage and there you go we're done this is actually a really good run for me and thanos that's probably my fastest run so that was almost a minute faster so yeah not a good look for loki i must say now let's take a look at the builds here before we go any further before we start slandering the god of mischief um, one thing I will say is Thanos is very good at 80 and Loki is very good at 80 tier 3. So I wouldn't feel bad if you bought this uniform and you haven't tier 4 him. However, if you bought this uniform and you haven't tier 4 him, I would say maybe wait to see. Maybe don't invest your resources just yet. Uh, I'm having a bit of buyer's remorse, I would say, uh, especially considering that, you know, I don't want to buy tier 4 packs, right? And I don't want to be out here um, shilling for every tier, for every new tier 4. So... On Thanos' end, he's got 12 Odin's Blessings, but more specifically, he's got 8 Odin's Blessings that are offensive, right? Because the heal ones don't really matter for a PvE comparison. He's got max, max type enhancement. He's got Stage 12 Power of Angry Hulk. He's got a 6-star artifact, and he's got a Mighty Rage with a 160 roll. And then, of course, he's got a Mythic Uniform. So if you compare that to Loki, who has actually 12 offensive Odin's Blessings, so he has 4 more than Thanos... He has rank 5 type enhancement versus rank 6, but it actually doesn't matter versus Ultron because it's universal. He also has stage 12 power of Angry Hulk. He's got a 4-star artifact, which is not as good as a 6-star artifact, but it is a better artifact effect than Thanos's because it gives him access to increased basic damage. And then he also has a Mighty Rage 160 proc with a Mythic Uniform. So then if we look at the stats really briefly, um, Loki is there at 92,100 energy attack. And Thanos is around 80, 97,800 physical attack. And then on my cards, uh, they're pretty similar. You can see they actually have one just under 1% more physical attack compared to um, energy attack. So there's a slight advantage there, but it doesn't really uh, amount to much. And Thanos is, is doing that, by the way. I mean, part of it's because he's native tier 2, but he's, he's, he has a higher uh, attack stat with four fewer Odin's blessings, right? So that's sort of the first comparison I want to make. It seems like Loki is worse than Thanos for uh, World Boss Legend content versus Dormammu. First up, we've got Thanos, and he's using his best team, Self Lead, with Squirrel Girl and Morgan Le Fay support. So this should go really well for Thanos. He's got lots of damage to boss types. We're actually going to skip doing the first and second skill here so we can squeeze in another full rotation with the fourth skill, applying that uh, iframe ignore. And there you go. Because of the iframe ignore on four, you can actually just one shot, or sort of two shot, two two rotation uh, hit uh, Dormammu out of that. So really, really nice stuff from Thanos there. Uh, you have to be a little bit aggressive with how you play the, uh, you know, his tier four skill. Most of the time I wait for the rage proc to be up because I find otherwise the damage is very lackluster. Um, and there are some, there are some opportunities or sort of bad situations, not opportunities, I would say. There are some situations where Thanos dies um, because he takes too much damage because of the way that his passive heal works when he gets hit. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you're just grooving, dude. We're a minute into this, and I'm about to just KO Dormammu. Let's go ahead and unload. Really late proc here, super delayed. Yep, see, this happens once in a while because Thanos is not really built for a rage, not having that uh, guaranteed crit rate. Uh, but there you go. On the other hand, for Loki, I think Sin and Valkyrie are his best team up. You could make the argument to swap Valkyrie for Morgan Le Fay, but I think this one is really, really good. However, same sort of situation as we had with, um, you know, World Boss. There are no extra mobs here, so Loki can't take advantage of the, um, you know, the extra situation where he does more damage because there's more enemies. Uh, you can let the Tier 3 play out there, and you can actually finish the phase uh, and I can clip in a uh, you know one of those tests where I did that but uh, it actually leaves Loki with very little HP it's very risky because he, he's taking hits while he's 
sitting in the tier three. So I kind of don't recommend it. I did lose 10, about 10 seconds by not doing that. But I think the uh, survivability that you gain in return is, is much better than, um, than the little bit of extra damage. We are going to use the tier three. Uh, you do cancel it for uh, ABL and stuff like that. But I am going to let it play out here because we do want as much damage as possible. And we're sort of racing against the clock to catch up to Thanos, which right now seems impossible because Thanos finished in about 10 Thanos, Thanos finishes run about 10 seconds from now and we are uh, still not at the Faltin phase so yeah there it is he's already behind Thanos which is kind of crazy but uh, it is what it is and yeah so Loki's 0 for 2 here we'll, we'll we'll finish this out but he's 0 for 2 right now versus the Mad Titan we're gonna get interrupted here so might as well just wait it out you can do a double switch shenanigan here, but I'm not going to because we didn't do it for Thanos either. Um, so it seems like if you want someone for world boss and GBR, then Thanos is much more of an attractive option um, than Loki. And yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit of disappointing. Don't worry, I'm a Loki fan as well. It's, it's kind of a bummer to me, but uh, it is what it is. So he gets it done in about two minutes, which is not bad but it is and it's slower than Thanos. Speaking of Thanos, the final test here, ABL versus Surtur. Now for Thanos, this is a more difficult fight, mainly because his fourth skill where he does the majority of his damage doesn't have any, you know, iframe. And so you end up in a situation where you are uh, taking a bunch of damage and you're losing a bunch of score because you're getting hit with his skill. So it is unfortunate, but it is the way that it is. Um, you also have the problem of Thanos, um, having to delay his rotation during this specific fracture season. Like I can't unload here right at the beginning. I actually have to wait quite a long time because the fracture actually happens right at the beginning of the fourth skill. And if you do it early, um, what happens is, okay, that was, a, yeah, you, there's basically two problems. If you do it early, you're going to miss it and you're not going to be able to cancel the, the roar. And then the other problem is that just there, uh, if Surtur dashes, you lose a bunch of damage because the tracking on, Thanos' fourth skill is not very good. So, yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have really the, the perfect design for um, ABL. Uh, but that is kind of, you know, it kind of is what it is. Here, we're going to wait a little bit because we want to, you know, increase the score. Um, ideally, you catch the tier three, or you catch the light with the fourth skill because it moves him forward. But we weren't able to do that, so we had to pop off the tier three first. This is not a terrible run, to be honest, but I'm also not a very good Thanos player, so I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting too much here. You also have to consider if ever the rage proc is off, that's sort of a, a Thanos specific problem because like other characters here, no guaranteed uh, crit rate means you know, you're not you're not always going to be 100% consistent. But yeah, here you can't just pop off the rotation right away. You absolutely have to wait. And if you don't wait, you end up getting screwed over um, and having to, uh, you know, okay, he dashed again. Yeah, sometimes he, I don't, I don't honestly really know what the, um, what the RNG is. Sometimes he dashes, sometimes he doesn't. It's really frustrating. Um, I couldn't tell you what the problem is. But uh, it kind of it kind of is what it is. And for someone who doesn't, you know, repeat these kinds of runs a lot and have a lot of time to repeat these runs, um, I don't really have patience for inconsistent characters. And so I guess a lot of the things that I'm saying about Thanos, it basically boils down to uh, him being inconsistent for for ABL, unfortunately, um, because of the targeting, because of the lack of iframe, because of all of these things. It basically creates a scenario where your score is kind of at the mercy of good or bad rng so yeah i'm not really a fan of characters like that this is probably a pretty bad run i think i get closer to 9 million but it's good to show you guys a bad run because it's more in, in the in the realm of the reality like you can see there the rage proc was right right at the end of the rotation despite um you know all of those hits so yeah for uh 4.5 million let's say i'd say on a good day nine maybe 9.5 million tops for me with a mighty rage with my account i have the benefit of having practiced loki about 20 30 times today but in terms of playing the much more difficult character to play here is loki he's much harder to play than thanos uh, he has he has potential for a much higher score 
but yes, much more difficult to uh, to play, mainly because you have to manage all of the mobs. So there is a really good opening rotation and an opening score because I was able to manage the mobs. But what does that mean, manage the mobs? Well, you guys know if all of the mobs are there, then of course, uh, when Loki pops off the fifth skill, it's going to have the maximum number of hits. If the mobs aren't there, then uh, you're going to have the minimum number of hits. And so where Loki struggles in GBR compared to Thanos, of course, in GBR, in uh, in World Boss uh, Legend, he excels here because, of course, these game modes have mobs coming out the wild, like literally mobs spawning um, everywhere. So it's really nice, uh, but you have to play him in, in accordance with that, right? You can't just ignore that or, or not pay attention to that. Because then what ends up happening is your score is going to be really bad and you're going to see other people playing much better with Loki and you're going to be confused. So if you're seeing why I'm not playing out the tier three at all, I'm letting the tier three, I'm just canceling the tier three right away. The reason for that is I don't want the tier three to play out and hit any of the mobs. I also don't want to get hit as Loki. I don't want the mobs to hit me because it has a chance of triggering Enchantress as a striker. And yeah, it's super duper annoying, but basically any time Enchantress strikes, she's going to kill the mobs. And of course, if she kills the mobs, they're not there to amplify your score. What also just screwed up my score a little bit that you guys might have noticed if you're like really into ABL is that the uh, light in the first phase, the fourth light landed right on top of me. I didn't want it to land on top of me, but I didn't really have a choice because of where I was. Um, and the sort of the positioning. So I'm doing basically the rotation that I normally do. The only real difference is you can splash in the one at the end of two, but you don't always want to splash in the one. So yeah, it really just depends on your uh, positioning and what the front, the searcher is doing and stuff like that. But this is a pretty decent run. As you can see, we're almost uh, where Thanos' old run ended up. So this is really Loki's bread and butter, again, with an identical build and a sort of average pilot. I'm not by any means a good ABL player or a great ABL player. Loki is just absolutely cruising. We're just about to pass Thanos' uh, score here, and we haven't even gone through the last major um, change. And actually, if you see my high score there at the top, that my high score is uh, 10.1. That was with Loki um, earlier this evening, and that's where I got the sort of 20 attempts that I, that I did with him uh, to get this score. So we're probably not going to end up scoring. Oh, maybe we are actually. Oh, holy shit, we are. I'm actually gonna end up beating my score here. This is how random Loki is, I swear. Loki is like the weirdest, weirdest character. With the last rotation, I didn't do it just now, but you can actually um, you can actually play out the tier three. I also didn't take advantage of the co-op skill. You can, you can pop the co-op skill twice. Uh, in the second rotation at the beginning and in the last rotation at the end. Um, but I'm still really trying to focus hard on the mechanics of the fight and then the, and then the sort of Loki mob management. And so that's why I'm, I wasn't able to uh, to do that. So there's still room for improvement, of course. Like, I think the best possible run I could probably do would be like closer to 11 million. I, I really think there's a lot of room for improvement here, but you can see how it easily eclipses Thanos, um, even with just like an average run. Uh, by no means, like, I, I cut this a bunch of times, you know, by no means uh, is, is it, uh, you know, the best possible run. So, yeah, that's basically how it breaks down. And the same thing is going to be for ABX. Uh, ABX and ABL, Loki's the king, no question there. But, uh, yeah, it seems like for GBR, PvP, and World Boss Legend, Thanos is the king. How does that make you feel, especially considering it's a seasonal uniform? Do the devs need to do more for Loki in other PvE content? Do they need to buff his tier four? A lot of players, a lot of content creators have been asking for buffs on his tier four because it doesn't seem to be very good for content besides ABX and ABL. What do you think? Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.